Deities in ancient Mesopotamia were believed to possess extraordinary powers and were mostly anthropomorphic, meaning they were portrayed as having human-like form. They were envisioned as being of great size and were depicted wearing melon, which was an ambiguous substance that covered them in terrifying splendor. The melon was also worn by heroes, kings, giants, and demons, and seeing a deity's melon was said to cause a physical creeping of the flesh. The effect was described using words such as puluchu, meaning fear. Deities were usually depicted wearing horned caps consisting of up to seven superimposed pairs of ox horns and were also sometimes portrayed wearing clothes adorned with decorative gold and silver ornaments. The ancient Mesopotamians believed that the gods lived in heaven, but that the statue of a god was a physical embodiment of the deity itself. As such, cult statues were given constant care and attention and were tended to by priests who would clothe the statues and place feasts before them so the deity could eat. The deity's temple was believed to be the god's literal place of residence and the gods were believed to have boats and chariots to transport their statues during religious festivals and battles. The major deities of the Mesopotamian pantheon were believed to participate in the assembly of the gods through which they made decisions and were seen as a divine counterpart to the legislative system of the Third Dynasty of Ur. The Mesopotamian pantheon evolved over time, and the history of Mesopotamian religion can be divided into four phases. During the first phase, starting in the 4th millennium BC, the gods focused mainly on basic needs for human survival. In the second phase, which occurred in the 3rd millennium BC, the divine hierarchy became more structured, and deified kings began to enter the pantheon. During the third phase, in the 2nd millennium BC, the gods associated with individuals and commoners became more prevalent. In the fourth and final phase, in the 1st millennium BC, the gods became closely associated with specific human empires and rulers. Over 3,000 names of Mesopotamian deities have been recorded, many from lists of gods compiled by ancient scribes. Various terms were used to describe groups of deities, including Anunnaki, which referred to the major deities of heaven and earth, and Agigi, which referred to the great gods. However, no distinct cult of Anunnaki has yet been discovered, as each deity considered part of the Anunnaki had their own individual cult. Similarly, no depictions of Anunnaki as a distinct group have been discovered, although depictions of individual members have been identified. Anu, originally known as an Insumerian, was considered the supreme deity and the driving force behind creation. He was embodied by the sky and was believed to be the god of heaven in its transcendental state. In some religious systems, all gods were considered to be the offspring of Anu and his consort, He. However, in other texts, Anu was depicted as the descendant of various primordial beings, and Enlil was often portrayed with his own separate family tree. Despite being considered the utmost god, by the time of the earliest written records, the main god in terms of worship was actually Enlil. As a result, Anu's supremacy was largely nominal. A multicolored stone known as Luludainichu, which was red, white, and black, was associated with Anu. Thank you for watching our video and if you truly enjoyed it, please hit the like, share, and subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications of our latest content.